All right, this video is about uncertainties and how uncertainties affect stabilization and command following when you use uh, fixed gain controllers as, uh, as the, uh, your control parameters, meaning that K in the stabilization form or K1 and K2 in the command following form do not change. It doesn't depend on state, it doesn't depend on time. So here, let's begin. A and B are matrices N by N, N by M, that are known. F of X is unknown. I am going to check how we can design a fixed gain, such as robust controller K, to compensate the effect of F of X, to yield exponential stability of the origin of this system. And I am making a standard assumption, this uncertainty, is upper bounded by mu multiplied by x and this is called linear growth inequality when you close the loop with this controller you are going to have x dot equals to a minus bk which is you would like to make it Hurwitz by pole placement or LQR and once you make it Hurwitz um, it satisfies this Lyapunov equation here p is a positive definite matrix and in the closed loop you are going to have this f of x function as well. All right, let's use this uh, Lyapunov function. We are taking its derivative to check stability. This Lyapunov function is positive definite, radially unbounded. When x is 0, v is 0. So it satisfies all these important properties. v dot is 2x transpose p a r x plus 2x transpose p f of x coming from when you differentiate it, you have 2x transpose px dot. Now, I can show one more line here. I am writing this as x transpose p a r x plus x transpose p a r x. Now, this is a scalar. I am going to rewrite, I am going to write its transpose because every scalar's transpose is a scalar. So we have x transpose a r transpose p x. p transpose is p because p positive definite, meaning it is symmetric. So I am using this and this in here. And we have this term appearing here as well. Now using the upon equation, this or this equals to minus identity, which we arrive to this step. Now I am taking its upper bound by norms to two norm of x, p, and f of x. Now at this point, I am going to insert this linear growth inequality to this equation to obtain this. So we have minus x to the power of two. This term multiplied by x to the you know power of two, or I mean by x norm of two norm of x's to the power of two. So if you look at the structure, you have minus one over two mu to norm of p multiplied by x to the power of 2. To claim exponential stability in this case, this needs to be positive definite. So for a given uncertainty bound, by making the, for example, eigenvalues of a r more on the left, or maybe using some um, turning strategies, optimal strategies to minimize the two norm of p, you may be able to satisfy this condition and once, once you satisfy in the presence of uncertainty you are going to get exponential stability so we can get exponential stability for the stabilization problem but we are going to see uh, this property will get lost for the comment following problem so uncertainties affect stabilization problems and comment problems uh, they can affect differently so let's see this so now I am jumping from exponential stability under this condition to the comment following problem. We have the same system and we have this K1x, K2c type of a structure. You can use uh, some other structures as well. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, right, in these problems I am assuming x is available for feedback. I am not considering an output feedback problem. And um, and I am using this feedback, feed forward controller for the command following. You can use an integral approach or another approach as well. I have the same assumption on the uncertainties upper bound, linear growth inequality. 
Now, when I close the loop, we have x dot, a r x, b r c, c is the command. I am going to assume to it to be constant, no need to complicate the problem, and f of x. Now, I need to define an error signal, right? I cannot use this Lyapunov function because here we would like to drive x to zero. But in the absence of f of x, we have from the system x that equals to a r x b r c. So we designed k1 to make this Hurwitz and k2 to allow some of the states to approach the command. So basically, when there is no uncertainty, I am happy about this closed loop system. So motivated from that, since uh, you are happy about this system, let's find its equilibrium point, which is this or you can equivalently write like this. This captures the ideal equilibrium point in the absence of uncertainty that you are happy with, meaning that some of the states following the command and you are happy about the overall close the performance and stability. But now, we, can we do the same thing? Can we achieve the same equilibrium point in the presence of uncertainty? Motivated from that, I am defining this error signal x plus this, basically I am using this equilibrium. But when you have basically this uncertainty, you are going to have e dot equals to a r e f of x. Now we are going to understand um, how this affects the equilibrium point. And this goes without saying, when you remove f, e dot equals to a r e, when there is no uncertainty, error goes to zero. So this error is a nice metric to capture the ideal equilibrium without the uncertainty and to analyze it with uncertainty. So I am using now V E transpose P E, um, again, radially bounded, uh, um, positive definite matrix. Now taking its derivative, v dot is 2e transpose p e dot. I am inserting e dot equation here, a r e f of x. Very similar to that I did in here. I am rewriting this term like this, but instead of x, now with e, we have this term, this term. Now here I am using this Lyapunov equation. So from this term, you have minus e transpose e. And I am taking its norm to 2 norm of E, 2 norm of P, and F of uh, 2 norm of F. Now I would like to do a spatial treatment to F. First of all, we want everything to depend on E. We are analyzing error. So not the actual state. First of all, F of X, 2 norm, is upper bounded by this linear growth inequality. And in here, instead of using X, I am going to use e minus this term, so e minus this term, taking its upper bound again, mu, to a norm of error, mu multiplied by this bounded um, extra constant term. I'm going to call it d1 in order to, um, uh, for the space, right? I, I have a limited space. So basically, once you insert, so I am going to upper bound this by this term. So now you arrive from here, you have two norm of, uh, to the power of two error, two mu p e to the power of two, basically this multiplied by the first term produces this term, and this multiplied by the second term here produces this term. Now I am going to call this d2 to simplify the math on this board. So now we arrive minus phi e to the power of two, 2 d2, 2 norm of error. Now this phi is no different than here. We have the same condition. You know, choose similar to how you choose k. Choose k1 to make it Hurwitz, and if necessary, you know, to satisfy this condition, use some optimal control techniques or some any other method, normalization methods to minimize this p. Or by trial by error, you can do this uh, to satisfy this condition. So this is the same condition, no different than the stabilization problem. I am going to assume phi is positive definite. So we have 2 d2 coming from now here. To conclude the proof, I am going to use Young's inequality with the positive constant epsilon. Epsilon d2 to the power of 2, 1 over epsilon, norm of error to the power of 2. 
Now I am combining the first term and the last term since boy, they, they won't depend on the error. We have minus phi minus 1 over epsilon to norm of error to the power of 2 plus epsilon d2 to the power of 2. Now in Young's inequality this epsilon is any arbitrary but positive constant so I am going to I am going to set epsilon be such that phi minus 1 epsilon is positive definite its existence is always guaranteed since phi is positive so so this term is basically positive and here with a couple more steps um, if you want me to show a couple more steps you can look at uh, you can let me know I can write the comments or you can look at my Leopoldo stability and more video on the channel it discusses how you conclude with boundedness from here basically from the final step you need to write v in terms of v dot in terms of minus some alpha v plus beta to conclude boundedness it is easier to go from here to there right so i am skipping that and focusing on the main point of this video from here you will get boundedness not asymptotic or exponential and stability, right? So basically, when you do comment following, uncertainty that depends on x also produces this term in contrast to the stabilization problem. And with fixed gain, robust, for example, controllers, you may lose uh, comment uh, following performance in the presence of system uncertainties. For the stabilization, you can get still by tuning and optimizing your parameters do it by performing a robust control method. There are many methods. You can handle uncertainty with fixed gain controller gain K, and you can get exponential stability. But with command following, you can get boundedness. You, lose the, you, you will lose these nice exponential or some cases uh, asymptotic behaviors. All right, I hope um, this video was about fixed gain controllers and um, how they deal with uncertainty. Adaptive controllers can give you good performance and they can achieve the ideal performance in the presence of uncertainties when they are matched. You can find uh, adaptive control, several adaptive control videos of, you know, in my channel. So if you, if you are interested, watch them. And robust controllers, I can say, uh, or fixed gain controllers, I don't want to specify this, this general fixed gain controllers, and robust is robust control is one of them. It's simple, simpler to implement. You remain on the linear domain. Of course, your uncertainty in this case is nonlinear, but what I mean by, you know, so linear like domain. And uh, they have simple structures but you may lose some properties that you go from stabilization to command following. Uh, adaptive controllers handle uncertainties in a different way by learning, so they have uh, some advantages in that regard in recovering the ideal behavior for both stabilization and command following problems. And in my channel on adaptive control videos, I usually explain this in the context of command following problem. As you see, slightly harder problem as compared to stabilization, so you can watch them. All right, take care.